Alright, I had so much fun doing this yesterday that I thought I'd do it again today, so I'm going to bring up the Second Life World map. And, wow, look at all those sims. going to try to find an interesting looking sim, just pick one at random. Go there and see what is to be seen. Ezreal. It's like an angel, right? This looks pretty promising. I'll try this out. Mm. Okay, so... I immediately rose underwater. Wow, this is... Those jellyfish. I've seen those before on another sim. And they're really... Really kind of cool. Those seaweeds are really impressive too. Very realistic looking. But I feel like tiny. Like my avatar feels very tiny in this environment here. So this is clearly just an underwater area. So. an oyster shell with a giant pearl, maybe? I don't know. I have to admit, I have like a bias for sims like this. Mainly because it's like... <laughs> and this is mildly ironic because I make a lot of very like realistic props. I think those are like pretty much the easiest thing in the world to make because you're just taking real world objects and copying them. I mean, it's no different than taking like a 3D photograph from my point of view. Like fantasy, a fantasy environment like this, it's a lot harder because you're basically creating the whole thing from your imagination. Well, I mean, there are basic guidelines. It's not like really the entire thing is from your imagination, but oh, this is pretty awesome. I mean, I don't really find this particularly attractive. I mean, as someone who studied architecture extensively, I, I'm not easily impressed by structures that are just simply geometric and seem somewhat randomized. I kind of look for a higher level of order and sophistication in, st in my structures, but, um, these are still pretty, visually just, they have an impact, like, it's kind of hard to deny. I've seen so many waterfalls in Second Life, it's kind of, like, I feel kind of jaded, I guess. I mean, like every waterfall is like this. It has like a little chill out spot inside. I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but I just I feel like waterfalls are totally overdone in Second Life. But as I was saying, I have a strong bias for fantasy environments, mainly because I think they just take more work and imagination. But there are so many sculpts here. This is like really lagging me down. I'm getting like five frames per second in this area. I've noticed that in mesh areas, I I seem to get a slightly better frame rate. The Sims with more mesh objects. I don't know if that's just because uh, people accidentally create lower land impact mesh objects, or if sculpts just are weird and they to take up more resources. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason. But it's just kind of a curious thing. This is really beautiful. And yet, they're just sprites. I mean, it's pretty incredible what you can achieve with sprites. I mean, personally, sprites just drive me crazy. Like, I... I can't stand them because two-dimensional objects really just do not exist in nature. Everything is 3D. So 
so like you have a sprite where it's just a texture on a two-dimensional plane inevitably it's gonna look fake at some point and they always look they always look fake to me like almost instantly when I see a sprite it's just like it's painful visually to me but with stuff like this where there's glow and alien sort of like organisms wow that's cool this eyeball plant is really cool well it's following me too that's neat I mean that's a pretty basic script but it's been executed with a very good effect right there these ferns have got to be my favorite thing so that's a 3d object that's not a sprite and that just looks fantastic and the the fronds don't even look that bad but um, obviously if you could create flexible 3d fronds of some sort that would be ideal and a lot more realistic so I gotta admit I'm getting a little bit tired of uh, of these like burned out shacks like I've been to several sims that have basically this exact same thing or variant thereof I mean obviously it makes a lot of sense because most of the structures on a sim in Second Life are almost categorically empty or abandoned in some way. So if you have a burned out uh, abandoned shack like that, you're kind of taking a shortcut because you don't have to bother decorating it. Good, finally my frame rate came back up. I think it's actually all those sprites that was lagging my frame rate so bad. Anyway you can see how much better it is right here that's another thing that really bothers me is sprite chains as you can see those 3d chains look a lot better than a sprite so lots of like celtic um, motifs which I've always found this kind of funny how there's like a sort of informal link between fairies and elves and celtic designs i mean yes um in ireland scotland and celtic regions there's a lot of like mythology that kind of alludes to things like that but there's no like direct correlation god i really need to get out of this sprite heavy zone just not sure exactly where to go. This is totally like intolerable frame right here. I think I, what I need to do is fly up. So here we got a little shopping area that, like, unless people are teleported directly here, we'll probably never ever see because it's kind of hard to navigate the sim considering how much is going on okay so over here we have a whole like I've noticed uh, in my explorations in Second Life there's usually two types of sims there's the sim where the owner like has an entire sim and they put like one or two buildings on it and there's not really much else and they focus on the terraforming and the landscaping and stuff and then there's the kind of sim where basically the sim owner is like oh I've got 60,000 prims or whatever I'm gonna I'm gonna use every one of those <laughs> and they basically just pack the entire sim and I feel like that's what's happened here like the sims a little too busy this is just the typical Asian domicile here. Get some little uh, stringed instruments. Yeah, my frame rate is horrible, and that's kind of what I was getting at. The consequences of packing the sim to the gills is that you end up with this like really, really bad frame rate a lot of the times. So this temple is cool. I'm getting a decent frame right here. This is so far my favorite part of the the whole sim. 
Those are realistic water columns. One of the biggest downsides to this whole sim is that the owner has basically blocked all of the natural light. And that means that all the internal light in these structures is going to look pretty bad. Like you can see how everything just looks flat. That's because Greatest staircase to nowhere, that's cool. Or Sarah Palin when you need her. <sighs> anyway. Alright, now I'm gonna try to fly up and see what else is going on. So there's another reason that, that I might have been experiencing that profound and aggressive lag is the not only is the ground packed to capacity, but the sky is also packed with structures. I don't know why, but I just love shit like this, like the little, like, crystal tower things. I, I have no idea why I like them so much, but I just do. I just love that stuff. Oh, this is interesting, a little over here. Flying is totally the way to go when you're checking out a sim. I mean, walking makes a lot of sense, and a lot of times sims are heavily weighted for walking, but when it comes right down to it, I just think it's a lot more fun to fly and see everything a lot faster. And obviously that's one of the main reasons they built flying into Second Life in the first place. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, so this is the problem. The It's not the buildings that are blocking the natural light, which is prevents global illumination, but basically they surrounded the entire sim with a giant uh, megaprim sphere to give it that, like, otherworldly purple nebula type look, but that's actually kind of working against them because it's blocking all of the... Uh, the natural sunlight, which actually adds a ton of realism. Like, these textures are not all that great, but they would probably actually look relatively okay if they were getting enough natural light to kind of shade them properly. That laser thing over there is pretty cool. So I think I'm almost done with this sim, because it looks like, well aside from that big thing up there, which I'm going to take a look at, this is cool, I've never really seen the, I wonder what these use, like projected textures, probably. That's a fairly realistic, uh, laser projector. I mean, it's all, like, emulated with using various tricks, but it looks, looks pretty realistic. There's a nice little lava pool. I'm feeling a bit cold, so I think I'm just gonna walk through this, this lava. Maybe take a little lava shower. Oh, come on, it won't let me. <laughs> it's not phantom, so I can't go and do it. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, that's a beautiful crystal. Yeah, I, I have to say, like, while I'm... Overall, I'm fairly disappointed with the quality and so forth of the sim. Um, at the same time, like due to my bias for fantasy and also just the fact that there are a few things that are really like fantastic to behold even if the quality's not that great it's uh, definitely worth the look <laughs> my cat is like mobbing me right now he's like give me some attention no mango no you don't get attention I'm making a video I wonder if there's a way in hey, hey, off the keyboard that's where I draw the line. Okay, so... Doesn't seem to be an easy way in here. There probably is, I just... Have to fly around and find it, but... I'm pretty lazy. I'm a lot more likely to 
just teleport. This is one of my favorite tricks, actually, in Second Life, that I've used countless times to get out of all sorts of situations. Just bring up the map and check out your your view cone, which is this sort of like silvery gray area, and just like click a little bit forward of your location, and then click teleport, and then you can go right through walls. Like, how cool is that? I wish that I could do that in real life. <laughs> so yeah, this was definitely worth teleporting into. That's a cool structure up there. I'm going to take a closer look. Very, like, steampunk. This is probably where you land when you teleport from the ground. There's probably a teleport location. I was kind of hoping there'd be something more in here, but it doesn't seem like it. There's something over there. The Black Sun nightclub. Okay, so this is just like a club then that floats over the the build. Several decks. Yeah, this this is the kind of build quality that I really find disappointing. Access denied. Uh it's just like very crude and in the defense of the people who build stuff like this it's not really their fault because this is all made out of prims and mega prims and those were never designed to be scaled to this dimension so that's kind of why everything looks so blocky and geometric but anyway yeah that's uh, uh, Ezreal I guess Blade City Brad Encore, Blade City, Azrael. Um, let's see if we can get some information here. Gene replacement. Okay, gene replacement created this. And this is the owner, presumably, of the sim. Valerie Knoller. Yeah, anyway, pretty cool. Check it out. Here's the coordinates. Thanks for watching.